Good evening YouTube, what the crap's going on, Era of Carthage here, and yes, I am in the Queen and the Crone DLC. I am going to have a lot of coverage for you before this releases. We are going to cover the new Legendary Lords, we're going to cover the changes to the Dwarves, but this is going to be the start of an Avalorn campaign with Alariel the Radiant. We're going to do a Vortex campaign with Alariel, and we'll do a Mortal Empires campaign with another Lord. So we'll get there. Be patient. I will be I doing both. So let's pick Alario. Um, you can see there is a new free LC Lord as well. With Aletha and R. Which is pretty exciting. Um, but yeah. Averlorn's initial start position. It says hard. I've actually gotten to play a little bit of the campaign. I'm going to put it on hard campaign. Very hard battle. Should give myself a fun combination uh, here. And we're going to play as Alario the Radiant. In terms of uh, race attributes, it's it's the High Elves, right? Martial prowess, espionage, intrigue, all the things we've seen before. But specifically to Ilariel, um, she gains bonuses when all of Ulthuan is held by the High Elves. But there's penalties when it's not. Um, she has extra recruitment capacity for Handmaidens, which is the new hero unit for the High Elves. And her right cost is a lot lower for the Invocation of Isha. Um, as a Lord, she has lingering bonuses on regions that she's visited, which is pretty cool. But if she gets around too much chaos power, she weakens. Um, and then she does have extra missile damage for Sisters of Avalorn and Handmaiden units, which is fantastic. Her special starting units are going to be Treekin and, yes, the Sisters of Avalorn. Let's jump into it. Enjoy a cutscene. Actually, I think this is the same old cutscene. Uh, I think they split it up where they show you the, your lord in the, the end. Master. So I'll be quiet. An enigma to men and dwarfs. Who know them as High Elves. At the center of the great ocean lies Althuan, a paradise created by the Old Ones. But when the Stellar Gates collapsed, demons flooded the mortal plane. All was lost until Anarion the Defender strode forth. The first Phoenix King vanquished the demons. With the aid of the Archmage, Kalador Dragon Tamer. It was Kalador and his Elven Mages who created the Great Vortex. A swirling maelstrom that siphoned the excess magic withering demon kind. With the world purged of chaos, the elves took it upon themselves to become guardians and stewards. The twin-tailed comet is oft seen as an omen, but this time its wake brought Great peril. The dragon with two tails flies lower than before. Its trail disturbs the vortex. I have felt a change in the winds of magic. Then write it, brother. Lead the mages of Safari. Bring all in the White Tower to bear if you must. Such lore is currently beyond us. I suggest a scrying ritual in the Pool of Isha. It may provide us with the answer. Such a ritual requires fragments of fallen waystones. Far more than we have. Then we find more. Make ready your ritual, Lord Master Talarian. You will have your fragments. I shall start the search in Lustria. Lustria? My brother will search here, in Althuan. Why do you care so much about the greater world? Why do you not? Stay here, brother. Protect Althuan. But I venture beyond our borders. Looks like they haven't added in anything in specific for Alariel here. I will ensure you have a home. Could be a placeholder to though to. too. They mentioned some stuff about placeholders whenever they sent me this, and I don't remember if that was part of it. But nothing specific to Alariel there. Just a little bit of brotherly arguments between Tyrion and Teclas. Nothing to see here, folks. Move along. All right. I'm excited. I haven't played a High Elf campaign starting on Ulth 1. The only one I played was Teclas, which I recently finished. By the way, epic finish if you want to go check it out. 
Isha cries. Her tears stain the world. Peace evades us, and I will not stand idle. The Ever Queen strides beyond Avalon's borders. Cain's servants threaten the very nature of my realm, having seized the Phoenix Gate. News reaches me of further murderous fleets setting voyage across the great ocean, inspired by the Queen of Hageneth. Others look to harm the Asuro, while the Vortex remains unstable. Across the chill waters, followers of Chaos spread their corruption, planting a seed of pure evil into my weakening heart. But great strength can be found in mysterious places. Great power resides within the Shrine of Cain. One that can twist the mind of its master, but also slay those who stand in his way. The time to make our stand is now, sisters. Isha is with us, for I am the mother and the protector of Althwan. All right. So it tells you a little bit about how the IELTS play. Um, we've done this before. Power of Nature's uh, and Defender of Oath One. Uh, court, as her court passes from region to region, she brings great joy and reward to those who stand beside her, ho uh, boosting their public order, reducing corruption. Sword of Cain is a blade of ancient and terrible power. Its bearer is granted prodigious strength in battle, yet stewardship of the sword can lead to civil unrest. Those in dire need of such power may seek out the weapon as a last resort on the island of the Shrine of Cain. But so, too, may those with more nefarious aims. Very interesting. So, as chaos seeps in the world, Alariel's strength and power weakens. Got it. And then Defender of Ulthuan is this right here. So you can see right now... There's quite a bit of uh, intrusion into Ulth One, and it's causing people's trust in Ilariel to weaken. How about we go regain that trust? How's that sound? How does that sound? So um, we've got our opening Queen. army here. Handmaiden of the Ever Queen, I stand with you. Let's get our handmaiden into the army, and let's take Evershale. Weep tears. We'll actually fight this um, just so that we don't lose a bunch of units and you'll all get to see a little bit of battle. So this extra reload and attack, we want to put that on our Sisters of Avalorn. And then uh, improved power recharge rate, we'll put that on Alario. To battle! Let's fight this! Yeah, obviously this is going to be a pretty easy win. But I wanted you all to see some of these, uh, see the Sisters of Avalorn in combat. They are pretty spectacular, and against low armor units, they're even really good in melee, especially when you start stacking up some veterancy and some upgrades that you can get through lords or other means. So they are a very interesting unit. They're going to be a little different than um, obviously something like a um, Lothern Sea Guard. The Sea Guard has a little bit of anti-large strength to it, whereas the Sisters of Avalorn are definitely more of an anti-infantry, uh, but again, they do not have, uh, they don't have full armor piercing capability, but they do have some, and it's actually pretty potent. Uh, they have 10 armor piercing uh, out of their base attack of 32, uh, yeah, 32. So it's, it's not a huge amount, but it's not a small amount either. Let's let you see these sisters in combat. They should be able to easily tear apart these dark shards that are approaching. Let's group them separate. Swing our cavalry around. Let's get you all some uh, nice close-ups here. Alright, let's get you all the close-ups. Here's a Lariel. She's going to lead from behind here, in the sense that we're going to use her to uh, just buff our units. Let's get our Illyrian Reavers into here. Look at the Sisters of Averlorn just laying waste to this Dark Shard. And the tree units here. Let's get some magic underway. 
use your special ability to summon up some more winds of magic. Let's get these Illyrian Reavers out of here and finish these guys with our archers. We'll swing our Reavers around. Swing away from that unit because I don't want to take hits from my own archers. There we go. A few of my units stayed behind. See the rear charge here. You got the tree kin fixing them. There comes the Illyrian Reaver smashing them. Let's check out our handmaiden back here. She looks like kind of a one off awesome sister of Avalorn. Oh, that scroll. I can slow down my uh, speed there. Good grief. The scroll wheel. It'd be sensitive. Kind of have to with the debug camera there, but there's your uh, handmaiden. Oh man, the game is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Ready. Let's get rid of these regrouped archers out here. Or the uh, crossbows, I should say. How are these guys not dead? Seems a little bit funny. Let's heal up. Watch the Sisters of Averlorn. Those arrow effects are so sweet. They look so good. There we go. No big surprise. Clean them up as expected. You all got to see some of the uh, the new units there. And as you can see, the Sisters of Avalorn absolutely own really good units. And surprisingly, fairly easy to recruit, other than their high cost and uh, pretty significant upkeep cost. Light you can unlock them at a darkness. Tier 3 settlement, or a Major settlement. Uh, it can't the just be any Tier 3 settlement, here. but a Major settlement, My yes. Picked up some wave fragments, got this uh, Mother and Protector. So 10 turns of extra armor piercing damage. We have another mission. Maintain control of one province, which we can do here pretty quickly. We'll get more influence, more wave fragments. Alariel the Ever Queen. Show you Alariel's uh, skill tree. Um, up here at the top is the Star of Averlorn, which is her legendary item that you can go obtain. Elven Steed, Barda to Steelmar Steed, Great Eagle, Ward of Isha, which is a ward save, a nice one. Isha's Blessing, which we've seen before, I think, with Teclis. Uh, Touch of the Ever Queen, which is pretty cool. You get extra melee attack when fighting against vampires and tomb kings. So that's pretty neat. And then Chaos Bane, a bonus versus large. And extra melee attack when fighting uh, Norska and Chaos. Not a ton of melee attacks. So I'm not sure how that'll go under. Uh, this uh, tradition dictates. You got Leader of the Court, Diplomatic Relations, Servant of Isha. I think we've seen something similar to this on the other lords. Blood and Fire. Takes down upkeep cost. Melee defense buffs for local armies. That's always nice. Ward save. Wow. That's pretty great, actually. That's a lot of extra replenishment between blood and fire and this. And there's this guardian here. Extra winds of magic. Melee attack for forest spirit units, which, again, would also make your dryads and tree kin a lot stronger. In terms of magic, earth blood, fos protection, life bloom, shield of thorns. Safari, Evasion, Tempest, Exorcism, which is cool, against the undead, uh, Arcane Unforging, Banishment, and Arcane Conduit, and then the standard uh, unit buffing tree down here for the uh, High Elves, but here's where you can buff up your Sisters of Averlorn, so they fall under this category. You can see it's going to send the reload time and everything. I don't know if any of these... Spearmen, Archers, and Lothern Sea Guard. I don't know if the Militia Master applies. Let's see if there's any of these Sky Master. Nope. White Lion. So there's nothing that appears to buff their melee attack through here. You can give them the extra armor and missile resistance here, which is pretty cool. And even more missile damage. Uh, yeah, and I think that's about the only, only effects in here. Then, of course... Mostly standard stuff down here, so that'll show you her skill tree. Queen I'm gonna start off, just want to get as much magic with her as possible, so we'll do Earth Blood. There is a bug right now where when you click that it's messed up, can't hear the sound. It's not the only bug too, I think I found a couple more. There's occasionally like a frame drop thing going on, but to be fair it is pre-release, so I'm not gonna hold any of this against them until it releases and we see the way 
that it's behaving then, but just making y'all aware, I have noticed a few things. It's pretty pretty typical, unfortunately, when we get a uh, new update. Sometimes things break. It's unfortunate. Wish it doesn't happen, but um, sometimes it does. Let's see. I'm going to get a couple more spearmen, pick up an archer in the turn. We're going to go take this Tor Sarah or Sarah, yeah, whatever. We're gonna take it. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's it's mine now. Isha's light. We just gonna auto resolve because this is a, kind of a lame battle. Auto save just in case it tries to kill my this sisters of Avalor, which it did not, fortunately. But it did give the Dark Cows more I kills than they deserve. Uh, that's okay. We'll live. Of the undying forest. Just gonna get a bunch more archers. We have a little bit of infantry. It's not a ton, but it's enough for now. Uh, a lot of archers early on. Should give us a lot of strength. We've taken over an entire province. We got more way fragments, more treasury. So good stuff to start with. And we can go ahead and unlock Fa's protection. And then our handmaiden here. I'm gonna go ahead and start doing replenish troops. And we can issue a commandment here. I'm gonna actually delete this one in the home province because we can build that in the secondary settlement. And we'll start building uh, this special building which unlocks the recruitment of dryads as well. So there we go. And let's do this growth so we can build up the province as quick as possible. We do have a right available to us. Let's see if it's a useful one. Uh, don't really need it right now. Let's just wait. And let's go see if we can retake the Phoenix Gate. That'll be one of our first objectives here. Alright, let's start moving back this way. And it wouldn't hurt to have access to some uh, Reavers. We can't actually build this uh, Handmaiden's Gallery until we get to Tier 3 settlement. Um, we are four turns till a surplus point, but then we'd have to wait. Um, even longer. Let's go ahead and get this uh, exono, exotic animal trader. I don't think we need the cavalry right now. And let's save our growth points. Uh, let's see. Archers. Probably wouldn't hurt to have a couple more archers than the spears. Let's spend up some of our money. Skip that for now in the turn. And we'll try and make our way up to the Phoenix Gate. We'll have to keep an eye out. Obviously you can get attacked by um, these blood quest or whatever they call it where the dark elves are out on a wa on the high seas I don't remember exactly what it's called I don't see any right now but as I was playing some of my own they showed up ended up having to fight off a pretty big army of enemies okay our territory goes to all the way up here driving back the dark driving back the dark let's fix our camera here by the way fastest Fastest, fastest, fastest. Let's make this quick. There we go. Servant of light. Um, we've got three more spots available to us from a recruitment standpoint, but we don't have a lot of money to take care of upkeep. Let's just keep moving. Dawn's hope. Which we are. In the turn. The Phoenix Gate will be fairly well defended. It's a special type of province that's really got a decent number of defenders, and there's an army up there. We might be able to go into like an ambush mode and see if we can lure them across and maybe take them out. Blood Voyage, that's what it was called. And I saw them up there at the top whenever the turn was ending. Servant of Light. Servant of Light, indeed. There's a really good chance of an ambush uh, if we get into the uh, forest here. Under her protection. Let's do that, and let's see if maybe the uh, Scourge of Cain no. will take the bait. They do have some enemies in the vicinity in uh, terms of other high elves nearby. Let's try and make some friends. Illyrion, uh, they'll trade with us. That'll help us out. Wow, there's a lot of like uh, somewhat angry people here. I will weigh what you have to say and the merit. Trade with me. As you say. Darn right, that's what I say. At your speak your deceitful words and then get out of my sight. Deceitful? Side. Get out of my sight. I'm a Lariel the Radiant. 
Lady, I've heard tales of your valor. Mind your tongue, lady. If you will it. I do will it. This is why I ask you to trade. Wise indeed. Okay, well we got some trade going. What would you have of me? You are no friend of the Phoenix Court, Traveler. Um Again, I'm Alariel the Ever Queen. I'm pretty sure I'm a friend of the Phoenix Court. What is with all these like uppity elves, man? It's just like living in, in Beverly Hills here whenever you're in Alariel. Oh hang on, let's stay in the ambush. See what happens. Come on, come on down here. Come on down here. Get down here. Come on, you scourge of losers. There's no one down here. Just come on down. Come play. Yeah, there is a blood voyage. Oh, it's coming through the mountains right there, too. Just saw it. Let's get some influence. Yeah. No. Looks like it just punched a hole in the unicorn gate, maybe? Alariel the Radiant. Let's, uh... Start moving down here. We'll move and we'll stay Ever in a ambush stance so that hopefully the enemies can't see us and they just keep moving in. Let's see if we can lure in some of our enemies. Lure them into an ambush with so many arrows. Yes, yes, yes. What a scourge of idiots. Excellent. Keep moving in. Order. I'm gonna stay in the ambush right here. Uh, I can't cover this road down here, unfortunately. Queen of Avalon. I think we could go ahead and attack this I army. Really want to ambush no. these guys too. Well, let's take out this um, blood voyage, and then we'll deal with the other scum. The greater good. Now remember, the blood voyage armies are unbreakable, so you've got to kill them to the last. Sound the All the more reason I have a whole bunch of archers and I intend to use them. There is a Sisters of Slaughter here as well, an unbreakable Sisters of Slaughter, so yeah. This world We're going to want to shoot us. them. Now, fortunately, they're a lot like Marathi in the sense that they don't like to wear anything besides scant nipple armor, which makes them rather vulnerable to archers. Having them be a pincushion is perfectly fine with me. And let's be honest, they're Dark Elves. They probably like it. You know, they're all into weird stuff. I mean, hey, whatever makes you happy. I'm not judging. Alright, here we go. Let's take these freaks out. Alright, hit our reavers back there. We're gonna have a considerable amount of archery power here. Let's move up. I think they're gonna move over to me. Because I've got the ranged advantage. Let's just take a position where we're not sitting down here in this water. And let's get all of our archers grouped up into a defensive stance. And we're going to slaughter the sisters of slaughter. Pun intended. Yeah, that's gonna hurt. Wearing some kind of strange metal bikini in the battle will certainly be the last mistake that they ever make. Yeah, they got wrecked. Not soon enough, though, because, like I said, those units are actually pretty tough. Let's group up the Ever Queen, swing her across here. Let's get group two, wipe those guys out, bring my reavers up. These bleak swords are exposed, and their unshielded flank is going to take a lot of fire here. And you can see the Sisters of Avalorn putting those exploding magical arrows into them as well. It's quite beautiful, actually. So our archery power is going to be pretty significant here. Let's go see if we can take out the uh, enemy... Lord, put a little bit of healing down here. Uh, anybody need some Fa's protection? How about these guys? Nice. 
Well, these uh, dark elves like to be slaughtered. At least that's the way it appears. Look at that. They're still alive over here. There's seven sisters of slaughter, and they've managed to get eight kills. Boy, they aren't kidding. It's no joke. I'm gonna target that next unit with my archers. You can see uh, a Lariel in here. Magical attacks, the Handmaiden as well. Still might get beat up pretty bad, so I'll have to be careful. These two really aren't meant for a whole lot of melee combat. That Handmaiden has anti-large hand weapon, which is pretty cool, and then an armor-piercing missile. Ooh, wow, I think we routed our own bowmen there. Did I do that? Nah, surely not. Well, those bleak swords are gonna wish that they had a morale factor because they're paying a dear, dear price. Let's bring these guys back here and let's watch these Illyrian Reavers tear a new hole through these infantry. Yeah! High Elf units look so cool. Not to cycle charge though, because again, they're unbreakable. Using our magic. Kill them. Kill them! Here we go. Smash them again! Oh man, the cavalry charges in this game are so good. So satisfying. Got 20 kills there. Could use my archers, but I'm probably gonna cause more damage to friendly. Uh, I'm like, what do I mean? Probably. I'm already doing it. Let's actually cease fire. Use your cavalry, see if we can finish these. Let's see if we can finish off all of these dark elf infantry. Because our spearmen don't have a whole lot of attack, it can take a while. Our reaver's doing pretty good. A couple cycle charges, and they've racked up 29 kills, picked up a chevron. Pretty much dealt with that bleak sword, enemy lord is gone, but again, un breakable. It's a blood voyage, so if the blood voyage starts getting some really tough units, boy, they're gonna be scary. It's gonna be no joke. It's no just standard Wa army full of goblins. This is gonna be a bunch of unbreakable, murderous dark elves who love nothing more than to spill blood. They will be nice to avoid. Got 16 dread spears left there. 19 dread spears left here. Let's roll up another cycle charge. See if we can rid ourselves of these dread spears. Die! Wow. Got 40 kills. Not bad for an Illyrian Reaver. It's pretty, pretty light unit. 43 kills. All right, now we've got these guys just about finished off. Let's go actually blob up a little here, and let's just spam a heal out. Get these units to where they're ready to replenish faster. Only one Dread Spear left. Three left over here. Two. And none. Well, just one. <laughs> Kill him! The last of the blood voyage. What's this guy's name? What's his story? You'll see if you can come up with something good in the comments. So there's a decisive victory over the blood voyage. Maybe we can also take care of the scourge of Cain here as well before the end of the episode. We'll see. We certainly have the archery power to do it. The Sisters of Avalor and already uh, two chevrons, 84 kills. We are the world's protectors. So those are some sisters Alone that you don't want to get on the bad win. side of. Ooh, check out that armor of Kalidor. Alariel picking up a nice armor right there from the beginning. Physical resistance and ward save. Sweet. Mistress of the Undying Forest. Take that. Life Bloom. Be handy, because it'll heal all of our units some every time we're Level casting, and she does quite a bit of casting. Let's do the Stimulate Growth, so that we're in a territory we can make it grow Queen faster. Of Speaking of, let's get back in our territory so we can start replenishing. And let's see what the Scourge of Cain does here. I'm assuming they're going to run away like a bunch of pansies. But who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. Come on. Get down here and fight. Where's your murderous prowess? I want to see it. Come on. Get down here. Get down here. Yeah! 
That's right, don't run. Come down and play. Now they're trying to get around me and get to my settlement, so I'll start marching that way. Actually, I'm going to come in behind them, that way they can't get away. If they hit this settlement over here, it's really not going to hurt me. There's very little there. Isha's chosen. In fact, we'll get in behind them and go into an ambush stance. Back the dark. And if they double back thinking maybe they can get to Evershale or something like that, maybe it puts us in a good position. Let's build these two buildings in the turn. We'll be able to recruit more Child sisters of Avalorn Asia, soon. What do you seek? A defensive alliance. I'm making sure they're not at war with any of my high elf fellows because I don't want that. Child of Isha, what do you seek? Join the war, pay them. Uh, sure. We'll be friends. I, I can afford 200 gold. Ooh. They saw me, and they're going to attack me, so we are going to get the fight we want here. And this will be where we end the first episode, hopefully quite successfully, over the Scourge of Cain. There's a lot of forest here. I'd like to keep my archers out of that so that we can maximize the damage. We'll target down their dark shards and their hand bows and let our infantry do the rest. Ooh, what a crappy position. Could deploy further back because they attacked me. Take advantage of this wide open space, but then we'd be fighting downhill. I think I'm going to deploy over here. Just get literally everybody up in the corner and we'll deploy into this forest and shoot out into the open. Group up all the infantry, leaders, bows. And Illyrian Reavers. Gonna hide them up over there. Start the battle. Let's bring all of our infantry out into the open where they can see I'm over here. Group three, get behind them. Group two, right here. And Reavers start moving in for the kill. Let's fast forward. Get the Dark Elves where I want them. Which is out in the open maximize the slaughter of my archers and it will be a slaughter let's not kid ourselves okay pulling my archers together uh, we're gonna slaughter these black art corsairs with hand bows Woo! that one got picked off by a sister nice oh crap yeah we better get their dark shards all right, group one, hard group, attack. Don't really want those guys fighting that dread spear, but I mean, I have a choice. Let's move around the flank, boyos. All right, slaughtering those guys. Get up here. Let's put the reavers onto this unit. And switch our archers here. Let's move around. As you say, forward. All right, my reavers should come out of the forest at any moment here. We away. Let's bring this unit Asa around. Forward. Hit Pull them in the, the back. Man. Group three, take out the hand bows. Reavers are going to take care of these dark shards. Hello, losers. Oh, yeah, should be a good downhill. Take them out. Nice. Okay, archers are doing their mass slaughter. Let's do some healing. Let's protect my units. Let's move group two up closer. Good, my reavers took those guys out. Group three can finish the hand bows. Dryads are getting a little bit trashed over here. Let's send them some relief. Nice. Group three. Let's actually get up on this hill. We should be able to fire down from there in a good position. Come on, Reavers. Finish these dark shards. They're just dark shards, for goodness sakes. I had faith in you. Yeah, we still got a lot of enemies here. 
Oh, come on! We can't finish a single stinking unit of dark shards off of a good charge. Once I get up in this flank position, should be good. Let's get in here and help out. We need to heal these. There's not many of them left. Let's try and keep them in the fight. Buff them up. Protect them. Get our lord in here. Okay, this blob is now your target. Reavers trashed some of the... Well, I say trashed them. They're getting trashed by freaking missile units. How pathetic are you? Can't count on you for anything here, Reavers. Oh, yes. Look at this archery slaughter. That position on the side of the hill. Wide open flank. And a huge blob of dark elves. Pays the price. Let's bring the Reavers in. Some healing. Charge these infantry. There we go. Group three. Kill the dreadlord. Let's protect those guys. Wrap it up. And let's watch the dreadlord get owned here. Actually, let's kill these crossbows that are doing some damage in the background. Oh, they're going to rout. So that's going to be the end of the army of the Scourge of Cain. So a massive ranged victory for us while our infantry just has to hold the line. Good stuff. Good stuff. Hope you all are excited for this campaign. I am. On the next episode, we'll retake the Phoenix Gate and maybe see if we can push on out and take some of the territory off of the Scourge of Cain so that we can improve our standing with the rest of Ulthuan. Because right now, they don't have a ton of trust for us due to the fact that there's so many invaders. We need to right that wrong. The Pirates of Sartosa are already doing some raiding. Got a channeling staff here. Could be useful. Alariel the Ever Queen. And let's take care of this. Life Bloom. Let's do Shield of Safri, because again, while we're casting, we get some damage Mistress resistance. Take all the forest. buffs we can get. Let's unlock um, Weapon Master. And Alariel let's finish these the clowns off. We are the world's protectors. We'll try and replenish. Wand of Jet. Excellent. Gives extra power reach or uh, extra we are triumphant. time to uh, get your abilities recycled. So, yeah, next episode we'll build up the, um, uh, what is it, this building I want here? Ooh, show me. Yeah, we're going to build up this right here, the Handmaiden's Gallery, so that we can recruit Sisters of Avalorn. And we're going to replace all of our archers Queen with those. Avalon. If we're able to afford them, our trade, we should be able to increase because um, now we can build up here and we'll be able to get uh, lumber to throw into the trade as well. So I think we're in pretty good shape. Hope y'all are enjoying it so far. Air of Carthage signing off from the first episode with Alariel the Radiant and Avalorn. If you have any questions about the DLC, let me know. I'll tell you what I can tell you. See you soon.